Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another lecture. Uh, this is the last lesson for Unit 4, Roots and Powers. We are going to apply the exponent laws to a whole bunch of different situations. We're going to have positive exponents, negative exponents, we're going to have numbers and variables, we're going to have fractional exponents. Uh, it's going to be a whole mixed bag and we're going to apply rules that we kind of already know, that we've been using for the most part, uh, to simplify as far as we can. It's a little bit of a long one, um, so let's just hop right into it. Uh, we have uh, the problem asking us to simplify the following, and that's going to be essentially what we want to do for all of these. We have 0.3 to the power of negative 3 times 0.3 to the power of 5. When we have two numbers, two variables, two anything with different exponents multiplied together, we add their exponents. Minus 3 plus 5 is equal to 0.3 to the power of 2. And that is what we would leave it as because we're treating 0.3 like a variable. If it was like x, we'd we have x squared. Well, that would be all we can do with it. The next one we have to its right is 1.4 to the power of 3 times 1.4 to the power of 4 divided by 1.4 to the power of negative 2. Now, what happens when um, we have a neg we, when we have something on the bottom we d we are dividing so we subtract it from the numbers that we add up top so 3 plus 4 is 7 subtract a negative 2 is negative 9 or is pardon me 9 we're adding the 2 so we would have 1.4 to the power of 9 7 subtract a negative 2 is adding 2 so it's to the power of 9. Um, they do get more complicated as we move on here. So we have in the first one, we have 3, negative 3 half to the power of negative 4, all to the power of 2, multiplied by negative 3 halves to the power of 2, all to the power of 3. So what we need to do first is we need to work through these exponents into our brackets so that we can get to something that we can actually add together. Um, so um, when we have exponents of exponents, we multiply them together. So this would give us negative 3 halves to the power of negative 8. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 multiplied by negative 3 halves to the power of 6. 2 times 3 is 6. Now we have two numbers or two variables that are the same that are multiplied together that have different exponents. So we need to add those together. We would be left with negative 3 halves, because that's still our variable, minus 8 plus 6 is minus 2. And then we do not like uh, to have negative exponents um, in our answer. Uh, so we will have that flipped over to make it positive. So it becomes negative 2 over 3 to the power of 2. And that would be as simple as we can make this because we are treating this as a variable in these situations. Uh, you're not asked to evaluate. If you're asked to evaluate, you would need to find the actual answer to the problem. But you're not asked to evaluate. You're asked to simplify. A uh, very specific difference in that situation. So keep your eyes open for that when you're doing problems. The difference between evaluate and simplify. We're going to simplify the next one. To the right, we have 7 to the power of 2 thirds divided by 7 to the power of 1 third times 7 to the power of 5 thirds. And then all of that is to the power of 6. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make all of these one item so that I can just put that to the power of six and find out what it is. So I would take two thirds and I'm going to subtract one third because it's on the bottom. So two thirds subtract one third that is one third and then I'm going to subtract five thirds so that would get me negative four thirds. So I would have seven to the power of negative four thirds all to the power of six I can then have an exponent of an exponent just once. So I can multiply that through. 
I would have 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. So we would have 7 to the power of negative 24 over 3. Negative 24 over 3 is just a number. It's actually 6. Um, so, pardon me, it's 8. <laughs> so we would have 7 to the power of negative 8. But we do not like to have negative numbers in our exponents for our answer. So we had 1 over 7 to the power of 8. And that would be what we'd be looking for. So we flip over what's inside. We don't flip um, the exponent. We just make the exponent positive. There are some try it on your owns now. There's two of them. So try those two on your own. Uh, and when you're done, unpause the video and we will do them together. Okay, let's do this. We have, first of all, negative four fifths to the power of two, all to the power of negative three, divided by this time, not multiplied by, divided by, negative four fifths to the power of four, all to the power of negative five. So first thing we're going to do is do the exponent of the exponent, work that in. So we'd be left with negative four fifths to the power of two times negative three is negative six, divided by negative four fifths to the power of four times negative five is negative 20. Since I'm dividing these two, they're the same variable, they're like terms, we can subtract their exponents because we're dividing. Minus six minus a minus 20 is like minus six plus 20. So that would be 14. This gives us negative four over five to the power of 14. Don't need to flip it over. That's what it is because we have a positive exponent. We are not asked to evaluate it. We are just asked to simplify as best we can. So that's what that answer would look like. We are then going to do our next one. We have nine to the power of five fourths times nine to the power of negative a quarter divided by nine to the power of three quarters. Let's do the top and then we'll do the bottom. Uh, because we're adding, we're multiplying these together, we need to add their exponents. So we're left with nine to the power of four over four divided by nine to the power of three over four. Because this is one over top of another, we subtract. So four minus three is one. When we're left with nine to the power of one quarter. And that is as simple as we can make those ones. Okay, So that one uses numbers. Sometimes you may be tempted to try to evaluate them. Don't just simplify when it asks you to simplify. Let's do some problems that have the um, variables instead of numbers. So we're going to do three, or we're going to do a whole bunch more that have variables instead of numbers in a mix and it gets a little bit more complicated. So we have x to the power of three times y squared times x squared y to the power of minus four. So when we have two terms multiplied together, we're going to be adding the exponents. So that is going to require us to add the exponents of x and the exponents of y together. Um, so we would have x to the power of 3 plus 2 is 5, and then y to the power of 2 minus 4 is minus 2. We don't like negative exponents, um, so what we're going to do is flip that over um, to put this on the bottom. We have 1 over um, y squared. So this will equal x to the power of 5 divided by y to the power of 2. And the reason that that works is because if we had if we had this just y to the power of negative 2, y to the power of negative 2, we would make that positive by going 1 over y and then all squaring that. But 1 squared is 1 and y squared is uh, y squared. So we get 1 over y squared. So that's why we're allowed to put it on the bottom like that. So whenever you have a negative exponent we are uh, with a variable, you're going to make it positive and put it on the bottom. Uh, let's do the problem to the right. We have 10 
a to the power of 5, b to the power of 3 divided by 2, a squared, b to the power of negative 2. We're asked to simplify. So we're going to do numbers and we're going to do uh, variables um, all separately. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. a to the power of 5 minus 2, right, because this is a to the power of 2 and it's on the bottom, so we subtract as a to the power of 3. And then 3 subtract a negative 2 is 5, we're left with b to the power of 5. Both, all of that is positive, everything is good with that one. We are done with that question. A couple for you to try on your own. Again, pause the video and then come back and see if you got them right. Okay, let's do this thing. We've got m to the power of 4 and n to the power of negative 2 multiplied by m to the power of 2 times n to the power of 3. So we are going to be multiplying um, each variable by its variable in the other bracket. So that means we're adding the exponents. So we take m to the power of 4 plus 2 is m to the power of 6. Uh, and then we have minus 2 plus 3 is just n to the power of 1. So then that is our answer. All done. We then have 6 over 6 times x to the power of 4, y to the power of negative 3 over 14, x, y squared. Again, we're going to break it up. Uh, we're going to do numbers, x's, and then y's. So 6 divided by 14, the best I can do is reduce that to 3 sevenths. Uh, x to the power of 4 minus 1, that gets us x to the power of 3. And then we've got y to the power of negative 3 subtract 2, so that's y to the power of negative 5. I don't like negatives, that is no good. So I need to flip it over to put it on the bottom. Uh, and I am then left with 3 x to the power of 3 divided by 7 y to the power of 5. Again, because this is a negative up here, I can put y on the bottom and make the value positive for the exponent. So that is what we would get um, for that problem. <clears throat> Let's do a couple of more. A couple more with exponents on the outside, fractional exponents. Good stuff, you get the idea. We have 8a cubed b to the power of 6 to the power of 1 third. What we're going to do is that exponent applies to all of these different terms, 1, 2, 3. So we're, we're going to um, work it in. When we're multiplying by exponents of variables, um, we just multiply the two numbers together. But when we have this, we have the, uh, 8 to the power of a third. We know that that's the third root of 8. So this is equal to the third root of 8 multiplied by a. So a to the power of 3 multiplied by a third is just 1. So it's just a multiplied by b to the power of 6 times a third. Well, that's 6 thirds, which is 2. Okay, so this is what we're left with, and we can simplify this even further. We have 2ab squared, and that is our final answer. Don't know why exactly I wrote the brackets, maybe just to show separation, but you don't have to do that. Uh, our final answer should have no brackets in it, though. The next one we have to the right, we have x to the power of 3 halves, y squared, and that is all multiplied by x to the power of a half, y to the power of negative 1. We're going to multiply the variables by each other, which means adding the exponents. So uh, 3 halves plus a half is 4 halves, and the 4 halves is 2. So I'm left with x squared. y squared plus negative 1 is subtracting 1. I'm just left with y. So that's all I would have left. In fractional exponents, um, it's really not much different. Let's do a couple more. We have, next up, 
is 4 a to the power of negative 2 b to the power of 2 thirds divided by 2a squared b to the power of 1 third. So we're going to break it up by a's and b's and numbers. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. a to the power of negative 2 subtract 2. That's a to the power of negative 4. And then b to the power of 2 thirds subtract 1 third is b to the power of 1 third. We can then um, take this and make it positive. There's not much more we can do. Um, power to the one-third, that's just how we have to keep it. So this is equal to 2b to the power of one-third divided by a to the power of four. I made it positive because I put it on the bottom. Okay. Let's try the one to the right. We have 100a divided by 25a to the power of five, b to the power of a half, negative a half, I should say, all to the power of one half. Um, let's apply the exponent. Um, no, 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 let's not apply the exponent first. That would be a lot of applying the exponent through. That'd be one, two, three, four, five different times. Let's see if we can get this smaller before we do that. Uh, we'll do the numbers and the uh, variables all separately. So 100 divided by 25 is four. A subtract 5 so 1 minus 5 is a to the power of minus 4 we then have b to the power pardon me if I want to bring it to the top would be b to the power of 1 half right if I can put it to the bottom by flipping its exponent uh, I can bring it to the top doing the same thing this is all to the power of a half now I can apply the exponent through and it's not as daunting. Um, four to the power of a half, so that's four square rooted. Uh, a to the power, eight to the power of negative four times a half, that's negative two. And then I have b to the power of a half, so that's multiplied by a half, that's b to the net power of a quarter, I do believe. And then we're going to make this value um, positive for the exponent and complete um, the work that we started with the square root of four. So that's two uh, b to the power of one quarter divided by a squared. Um, and that's our final answer. There are a couple of try it on your owns now. So go ahead and do those. Um, and then come back and see if you got them right. Okay, let's do this thing. This is the last. Try it on your own for this unit. There's some do nows for you to do. And then it's the test. So let's try this. We have 25 a to the power of four, b to the power of two, all to the power of three half. Now. Um, because this is as simple as it can get in here, we just need to apply this exponent through. So this would be 25 square rooted to the power of three, uh, a to the power of four multiplied by three halves. So times three is 12 divided by two is six. That's a to the power of six. B to the power of two times three is six divided by two is three. That's B to the power of three. And now I can just finish off what the square root of 25 cubed is. This would be five cubed is 125, a to the power of six, b to the power of three. And that is our answer. Um, the next one we have, I guess I can leave that on the screen, why not, right? Next one we have is 50 x squared y to the power of four, over 2x to the power of 4, y to the power of 7, wow, all to the power of a half. Now, unlike the last one, this is not completely simplified inside the bracket, so let's make it easier on ourselves. This would be 50 divided by 2 is 25. x to the power of 2 divided by x to the power of 4. 2 minus 4 is x to the power of negative 2. 4 minus 7, y to the power of negative 3, all to the power of a half. 
we're then going to apply that exponent in here. So we would have the root of 25 uh, minus 2 times a half, that's x to the minus 1, and then y to the negative 3 times a half, that's y to the negative 3 halves. We are then going to make these positive and complete our square root. We would be left with 5 divided by x times y to the power of 3 halves. And that would be the final answer. I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have questions, definitely let me know. Um, and other than that, good luck on the test.